Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Hey guys and welcome to this brand new tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at using a physical camera in 3ds Max 2016 and we're going to be creating a depth of field effect just to get a nice blaring on either the background or the foreground depending on you know your your composition you know whichever sort of shot you want to go for you can customize it fully. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using this this sort of template uh, scene that I've just created with a few basic primitives and I'm going to show you actually first of all the kind of thing you can achieve with this now obviously this is a scene that you know is an interior you've got a sofa in the background you've got uh, you know wallpaper you've got a table with a book magazine and a note and a vase with like a, a like a dead rose in it or a dying rose in it that's where the focus is you can just about make out what it's saying very sad story there you can kind of see how the how the, the sort of focus blares as it goes further to the background so you get that depth of field effect the focus is only around this kind of area this kind of level around about here and it just drops off as it pushes uh, or as you go further into the background so what we're going to do is we're going to be going ahead and creating a similar effect so in 3ds max what you do is you get your perspective view in as close to you know the, the view that you want the camera to be as possible you can of course adjust the camera later it's not something that's set in stone so we're going to be using a physical camera the easiest way to create a physical camera you know is to hit Control c now once you're in the perspective view then it controls you otherwise nothing will happen now once you hit Control c you'll notice that a camera has appeared in your orthographic views and now your uh, what used to be your perspective view is now called uh, Fizz Camera 001 so that's a phys physical camera 001 so we're gonna go in now we're gonna adjust this so we can select the camera in two different ways you can select the actual camera itself and you can move the position of the camera you can see how it kind of rotates around that target which is just there so although this isn't a target camera um, exactly it still it still has a target so you can kind of move that target around um, you know whichever way you please really left and right whatever whatever you want it to whichever way you want it to go um, that's fine I'm gonna leave it like that I'm not really too bothered about you know the composition of this scene because it's not that great to be honest it's just a few basic primitives so what you want to do is you want that target to be sort of roughly in line with the kind of front area of the object you want to be in focus so somewhere like that is going to be okay um, it doesn't have to be touching the object or anything like that as long as it's kind of roughly in the same kind of line that you know it's going to really focus in on that sort of the front third of this uh, teapot okay so the next thing is we're going to create uh, we're going to select the camera we're going to go and First of all, we're going to change the renderer. So we're going to go to rendering, render setup, which you can also access by pressing F10 on the keyboard. You're going to go to re uh, renderer, and if it's set to the default scan line, make sure you change it over to NVIDIA Mental Ray. You definitely want it on Mental Ray, otherwise you're just not going to get the effect um, that we're after. Next, what you do is still ensuring that the camera itself is highlighted, not the target. You're going to go into the modify tab and then just scroll down. Now you'll see a few options straight away, but what you want is underneath the, well, underneath the focus um, sort of panel, you're gonna see a little checkbox to enable depth of field. Now, as soon as you tick that, you're gonna notice how the icon changes. What that's telling you is it's kind of the, the focus gate, I guess. It's kind of the front area, the middle where it's actually going to focus, and the back, which is the point from where it stops focusing. So the focus is gonna be lost from the camera to this area right just here and then it will start to focus until it gets to the middle area and then once you get past that it's going to start to lose focus as it pushes back further you can adjust this by going onto um, the aperture so if I was to reduce that then the focusing is going to be a lot tighter on the front of the object whereas if I kind of increase that there's going to be less blaring as you know um, we go off into the distance so we can play around with these settings and we'll see what we get so if I go with something like let's say number two and you go and render that so you can just hit F9 make sure you're in this uh, this physical camera view and hit F9 you'll also see a preview in the perspective view um, sorry in the camera view depending on how good your um, 
you know your your sit your system is you know you will get a live preview so you can kind of see how this is nicely kind of focused the background is blurred as well so i'm going to get rid of the grid because that's sort of irritating and annoying but if you just leave it without doing anything in the viewport you'll see that it does blare a little bit and that's a really good kind of way of doing that if it doesn't happen for you then make sure you're set to realistic and not shaded okay that's a very important thing um, you want to make sure it's set to realistic obviously it depends on the the capability of your pc but should work fingers crossed now, if i was to reduce this even further let's go down to about like 1.2 you'll notice that the background starts to blur a hell of a lot more okay so if i just hit f9 to render you'll notice how the background will be a lot more blurred now this is rendering fairly quickly obviously the more complex your um scene is or the more lighting effects you've got in there anything that makes the scene more complex it's going to take a bit longer to render okay now one last important thing is when you're going to create a render you need to know how much of this actual you know viewport is going to be rendering because obviously right now you can see that the the teapot is cut off but when i go to render the entire teapot is pretty much in the scene itself so what you're going to do is you're going to go to where it says Fizz camera 001 or whatever the number of your camera is you're going to go down and click on to show save frames and what that does is it tells you that is the border of your render now if you hit f10 you can change this um, you can go down to output size you can change it to hd resolution if you want to go for like a tv screen resolution and this will change accordingly so that's say show save frames will change um, accordingly which is perfect so i'm going to go with that let's i'm not going to go too big just because it's a really you know, not a great sort of composition anyway um, now what you can also find is that sometimes when you um, lower the aperture or, or higher or make it higher it can affect the lighting in the scene whether it goes a little bit too bright or a little bit too dark so what you need to do is know how to manage your lighting I do mention this in my lighting tutorial talking about exposure control so if you don't know anything about exposure control make sure you go check out that video on soft shadows in uh, 3ds max and i'm pretty sure i cover exposure control in there but i'm going to cover it anyway what you do is you go to rendering exposure control and then you can make sure you set it to uh, mr photographic exposure control it's probably the most advanced um, and it works best because it is a mental ray based exposure control now when you render the preview it's going to come out pitch black that's always the default thing that happens you need to go to exposure value and then keep clicking down until in this little preview here you're going to be seeing your scene just appear so zero will kind of bring it into um, how it looks in the viewport so you can see what it looks like it's got the blurring in the background now one last thing that I want to mention if I just reset my values back is that when you render this currently it isn't very clear it's kind of quite pixelated um, which isn't very good so if I just show you here if you look at the background here where the blurring occurs where the depth of field occurs it's very it's quite pixelated you kind of got a bit of distortion on there so I'm going to show you how you can change that you go into your render setup again F10 on the keyboard you go to renderer and you want to change the quality up so default is 0.25 if you put it up to about let's say 4 it's gonna be quite high obviously the higher that you make that number the longer it takes to render but what you'll find is that the actual effect if you look there it's a lot smoother but as you can see it's taking a little bit longer to render and if you've got a really complex scene it's going to take even longer but the overall effect is a lot nicer so once you're happy with your um, the way that your camera's positioned and the composition of your of your scene and the shot itself you can bump that quality setting up and then leave your computer to to render the scene out um, so yeah if you want to obviously apply focus if you want to switch the, the focusing so the backgrounds in focus but the teapot is not in focus simple thing you literally grab onto the target and you're going to move this back you're going to push this all the way back so it's sort of roughly well just in front of the background like so now if i go back in my perspective view and just let it sit there for a second you'll notice how the teapot now becomes um, blurred now again you can push this up a little bit more by clicking onto the uh, camera itself and then we're going to make the aperture even less so we're going to go down to about 0.768 and if i hit f9 
you you'll see the opposite effect now where the background will be fairly focused but the foreground is going to be blurred so that's exactly what this uh, depth of field camera effect does it adds more sort of um, I guess let me bring this uh, example back up obviously makes your scene just look that little bit more cinematic um, and you know can really sort of set off uh, a little kind of uh, image even like this just a few assets a few objects the focus straight away you know is on this area just here okay so hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial guys if you have then please do drop a like and subscribe and I'll catch you all next time